bias more so than I do shut. Uh, he's always done that. Uh, we, did, were you in there just before? Did you see the video I showed? No. Yeah, from when he was 12 years old. So at 12 years old, uh, if I was to, to, to describe his motion, it would have been laid off, open, weak grip, um, hip slide right, lead shoulder goes into extreme side, then in the back swing that shoves the arms just way up in the air. At 12 years old? At 12 years old. At 12 years old, he took that swing, he went to the start burst, shot 63 in the second round, and won the event by 17 shots. So, you've got this kid sitting in front of you who says he wants to win the Masters with the style that I just kind of verbally um, represented, and I'm thinking, gosh, you just shot 63, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> So it's been a delicate process how you blend the, yeah, we need to modify this so we can create a greater variety of shots, because he was always right to left, always right to left, and it was low. And so he wanted to increase the trajectory. We didn't need to do that by changing the right to left. Um, but we also wanted to give him the ability to work left to right when necessary. Um, so blending the two, how do I change the style, but yet um, still produce the skill output for the kid had developed through 12 years old without so much as two or three lessons. And that was a real challenge. And it was a challenge that initially I was just telling Golf Week there that it, it, was, um, it was exciting, but at the same time it was nerve-wracking too. You of course, you, you don't know up, what happens. Right? Yeah. right. And yeah. the way I've been trained is, you know, you can ruin a junior a lot quicker than oh, you, you like, can help yeah. him. So yeah. for the you expression, to, do no harm, certainly rings true, doesn't it? Yeah, so for you to do what you did is amazing. Yeah. And um, who trained you? Who was your mentor and teacher? So I guess uh, I would have to go all the way back to the Victoria Institute, Institute of Sport golf coaches who uh, I wasn't part of the team, but I was taking lessons from them because I started golf very late. Uh, but then beyond that, from, so I started at 16, but from 17 through probably 20 years old, it was all self-taught, it was just all organic. Yeah. Until I got to a point in college where I wasn't playing well against the competition I was playing against, and certain people got in my head and said, these are the things that need to change. And so I went on this stylistic pursuit. So my education came from anywhere and everywhere relative to swing method. Okay. Uh, and I started teaching that way until I realized that uh, I wasn't getting the results for the clients that were coming and paying me yep. that they necessarily wanted. I was seeing them come back and they changed their movement to the swing look different, but they were still getting the same garbage on the course. So in self-reflection, in a conversation with my wife, she said, well, why don't you go learn from the best? So I wrote to the top 50 in the country and, and spent the better half of the next 12 months traveling around and learning from them. Guys like Butch, uh, Randy, Chuck Cook, Rick Jensen, and three, four, five others. Um, so I wouldn't say that there's been necessarily one person that's shown me this is the way it is, but there's been multiple. And even further than that, that's just as it relates to golf style and golf skill. Yep. Um, I wrote to world experts, Paul Shemp at the University of Georgia, uh, expert on expertise, uh, et cetera, et cetera, biomechanics, psychology, motor learning, uh, and started somewhat of a self-study odyssey mm -hmm. on those, in those areas to, to create the knowledge that sometimes what's regulating a person's performance is not what you and I can see as golf instructors but it's what's happening inside, and you need to know what's happening inside, at least have a knowledge to be able to, um, to elicit the response that I'm looking for from the player. That's cool. Yeah. And what are you working on with Jordan now? Uh, so currently it's, uh, well, off-season work was to get him out of the same pattern he showed up as a 12-year-old with, which was the sway to the right and the arms going steep, and getting him to touch deeper or flatter to bring back the ability to turn it right to left at will. He likes to turn it right to left, but at the same time, he's a player that loves to hit all the shapes. And Phil Nichols has been quoted as being of high praise in Jordan's ability to hit whatever shot he wants at whatever time. But towards the end of the year, he couldn't draw it all that easy. So, uh, Do you guys use about... TrackMan? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but I use technology uh, as a diagnostic tool for me. Yep. Far more than I use it as a tool of validation to say, look at AB here, as it's for the student. So, um, yes, I, I use all the technology that I can get my hands on that's um, economically feasible for me, but at the same time, uh, if I see the athlete doing what they want to do with the ball, if their intent is matching yeah. the execution, it doesn't matter what the technology tells me. Right? How often do you go out on tour with him? Last year I went to seven events, uh, started at Pebble, ended up at Presence Cup. This year it will probably be about the same volume, 
um, but some different events that I'm excited about, like the majors. Yeah, right. of course. So, yeah, it's amazing. Exciting. Yeah. I wish you so much luck. Yeah. You've done an amazing job. Thank you very much. I appreciate it's it. It's nice to keep um, a kid unique. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And different. Yeah, and special. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.